the fight of the year. Charles Oliveira versus Islam Makhachev is the fight that everybody's talking about. And it's almost here. We're in fight week. And the honest truth is, the fight can go either way. These are currently the best lightweights in the world, with completely different kind of styles, or should we say different approaches they want to go into this fight with. Islam Makhachev's goal in the fight is to get Charles Oliveira to the ground and beat him through his grappling. It comes to submissions, which Charles has been submitted before. Islam can also do that as well. He can win through his ground upon, or just controlling Oliveira enough to win a decision. The general way Islam Makhachev would win is by shutting down Charles Oliveira's lethal attacks and control that finisher. Charles Oliveira's way to win this is by finishing Islam Makhachev by any means necessary. This comes with standing strikes or submission attempts in the middle of transitions and scrambles. Oliveira's never been past the third round for a reason. The man always looks to finish you, even in the Tony Ferguson fight, which is the only decision win he has in the last eight years. He almost got the finish on Tony Ferguson in that second round, but Tony's credit to being so tough never tapped out. But then there was a moment in the third round where Charles could have got another armbar far away from the round ending, so Tony could not have been saved by the bell, but instead went another method. It looked like Oliveira in that fight didn't necessarily want to go to that armbar again for Tony Ferguson's sake. And by the account of Oliveira's opponents, the man it's really hard. Justin Gaethje came out and said that he's never fought a fighter that hit him as hard as Charles Oliveira did. So we know for a fact that Islam also hasn't fought someone that powerful before. Oliveira has pretty much become one of the most powerful strikers in the whole lightweight division, as well as being the most lethal submission artist in UFC history, not even just in the weight class. Out of the thousands of fighters that have entered and exited the UFC, nobody holds that title over Oliveira when it comes to submissions. And that is a big danger to Islam Makhachev's heavy grappling style. So for this one, we're going to be looking at how would Charles Oliveira win this fight. The main concept for both fighters, not only for Charles Oliveira, an important thing for both guys to win here are, are about intelligent pressure and intelligent distance management. The distance management part is more on Oliveira, but the pressure is equally important for both fighters to gain some kind of advantage over the other. This is a chess match that could be ended with one move. The general way that Oliveira would win is by keeping that long range on Islam Makhachev at all times. Never want to crash his body into Islam. He never wants to get into that close range because that's where Islam can take him to the ground or tie him up in the clinch. Even though Oliveira is very capable in any scenario when it comes to grappling, even in the standing clinch, shown from his Muay Thai plum, his knees to the body, and all of that, he has great control in there as well. For the most success possible in avoiding all the danger from Islam, he wants to keep that longer reach. That's actually where he's going to be more comfortable and have more advantages than in the clinch. He is overall a better striker in almost every which way. The only thing Islam is better at is just basic defenses. He doesn't get as hit as Charles Oliveira. That's merely the only thing that Islam is better than Oliveira at. But when it comes to the power, when it comes to the technique, when it comes to setting up the opponent and all the qualities that make a good striker, Oliveira is way ahead of Islam Makhachev. They are both going to be in opposite stances, which means that this is going to be a fight with the lead hand and who takes the outside foot, which Oliveira does much better than Islam Makhachev. His hand trapping to gauge distance, eliminate the jab from his opponent, and also line up his own right straight is going to be a great thing for him to go to for this whole fight. But the hand trap is more important than anything else because from there, he can always keep Islam on the outside at far range where he can jab him. He can with a right straight from a long range. He has a longer reach than Islam. He can kick him to the body or to the head, but his kicks have to be careful because Islam is very quick to catch him as he's shown that time and time again. One time against Bobby Green who threw a front kick to the body and that's the only reason why Islam even got in on Bobby Green to clinch up with him. And then the Dan Hooker fight, Hooker threw a naked leg kick, and Islam saw it, he was very quick on the trigger, exploded with a hook, and then took Hooker down at the same time. So we know that Islam Makhachev is very explosive. He's very similar to Habib, where he has quick reflexes. He sees all these strikes coming at him, and he responds appropriately using his grappling as a counter. So definitely the kicks from Charles Oliveira have to be reduced with how much he usually uses them. He throws a lot of kicks in all of his fights, but he never has to really worry about the opponent taking him to the ground. And this one, it's going to be more about his boxing. And the kicks are only going to be there if he knows for a fact that he can set up Islam Makhachev to fall into one. And we're going to talk about that a little later. Because there is a scenario that can happen here where Charles Oliveira can catch Islam with a head kick. And in fact, I would say it's almost guaranteed to happen if he sets it up correctly. So hand trapping, keeping a post on Islam's lead hand at all times is going to be key for him to hold Islam at that distance and tag him with long range strikes as well as see anything that Islam wants to throw at him. This comes with big left straights, big left overhands, exploding out of the gates, or even coming under for takedowns. And these takedowns are going to be somewhat of a desperation shot to break the pressure because with holding Islam at a range like that, 
Charles is most likely going to have to be the one that's pressuring this fight, which I think is almost guaranteed for him to do. So if Islam is getting pressured back, which is most likely going to happen, almost everybody he fights pushes him back, whereas on the other side, Oliveira is one of the best pressure fighters in the whole UFC right now, and almost nobody's able to pressure him unless they hurt him first, something he doesn't have to worry too much about Islam compared to guys like Chandler and Poirier and Gaethje, right, because Islam doesn't hit as hard, he's not as explosive as those guys, he's not as good of a striker as those guys. Once Islam is getting pressured and he has no other means of getting out of this pressure, he has no other means of breaking it, he might have to shoot takedowns in order to do so, and these takedowns generally come in the form of a double leg or a single leg, shooting explosively from a distance, and that's exactly what Oliveira is going to want from him. It's actually almost the exact same thing that Kevin Lee did to Charles Oliveira, and he got submitted for it. He got caught in a guillotine, his neck got wrapped up, and that choke was super tight. One opening for a guillotine, and this fight could be over. That's why Islam is most likely going to want to avoid shooting for doubles and singles, and more so look to clinch up and get trips in there. But if he's getting heavily pressured backwards, he may have no choice. Because if he's getting his hand trapped and jabbed at long range, hit by right straights at long range, kicked to the body, kicked to the head, and the striking is not able to get him out of this because Oliveira keeps the pressure on him while not getting too close where Islam can clinch up with him, Islam may have to shoot desperation takedowns to break that pressure. And that is like a last resort for Islam Makhachev, so that's exactly what Oliveira is going to want from him. Get that last resort attack out of Islam and capitalize with your finishing ability. And what's another reason why this pressure is so important for Charles Oliveira, it's actually a big thing against Islam's striking defense. Islam is a heavily defended-minded fighter. He focuses more on defense than offense when it comes to his striking. And how does Islam usually defend strikes? Pulls away, backsteps. That's really it. He moves back away from everything and then re-engages forward. Well, if the fence is right behind him, how is he going to move back? It could cause his stance to be a lot more parallel, ultimately opening him up more for strikes as Islam's lateral movement is not that good. If he's forced to move out laterally, I could definitely see where Oliveira can intercept him with some strikes. This comes with the hooks, this comes with the high kicks, this comes with a variation of different kind of attacks. So as you can see, that pressure from Oliveira negates a lot of Islam's strengths when it comes to the stand-up and shooting takedowns, as well as makes things a lot more obvious for him to capitalize on. The most important thing that Oliveira has to focus on here to not do, which he does against everybody, he cannot overextend with the left hook. Oftentimes, when he's pressuring the opponent and they're trying to move out laterally, he will throw out that overextending left hook to knock them out. A lot of times it misses, and because of that, he crashes his own body into his opponents, getting in as close of a range as possible. That's where Islam can tie up with him. Oliver has got to be very keen on not being overly aggressive as he was in other fights. Keep a moderate pressure, be moderately aggressive, and snipe at Islam Makhachev from a distance. That's exactly how he's going to have to approach his pressure. Because if he's throwing that left hook and overextends and Islam ducks under it or has enough space to pull away, Charles has effectively given Islam Makhachev the way out of that pressure. And also reversing the position on them too, because Islam is most likely going to want to turn the fight into the cage, clinch up and turn into the cage. Now he's in the clear advantage over Oliveira, because the clinch does a lot of things against Oliveira. It takes away most of his submission abilities, right? Especially if he gets tripped out from there or hip tossed or something like that. It's harder to get most submissions from those kind of positions. Oliveira's back up against the fence is going to eliminate a lot of his dangerous knees and elbows. And Islam can ride the clock out, which is something that Oliveira does not do. Oliveira does not want the fight to go that way. So that may be the most important thing for Oliveira's chances in this fight. But how can he effectively get Islam to back up? And what can he specifically do in the center of the cage before Makashev starts backing up? Generally, what you see from Charles Oliveira is he throws a lot of push kicks. He throws a lot of front kicks to the body to back them up, and again, that has to be reduced. So how is he going to pressure Makachev in the center without the front kick? He could just fake it. You don't have to throw the technique to back the opponent up. You could just lift your knee up, which is actually something that Oliveira does regardless. He does it to defend, and he does it to fake on the opponent to back them up. They respect his kicks. They respect his distance. And we know this works on Islam Makachev because Bobby Green actually used this, and it was effective. And also, what lifting the knee is going to do is eliminate a lot of Islam Makachev's kicks. Notice something about Islam Makachev. Whether he's being backed up or he's in the center... He's throwing a lot of kicks. This is to get the opponent away from him as well as open up his own timing. Without the opponent being aggressive on him, Islam could start to download some data. He could start picking out some openings and that's what his kicks are doing for him. He's not necessarily trying to knock you out. I mean, it'd be great if he lands one, but they're always naked and he's throwing them out from a long range. He's generally just trying to keep you away from him to give himself some space and time. When it comes to these front kicks to the body that Islam is throwing or the leg kicks that he's throwing, Oliver is one of the best fighters in the lightweight division at least to defend leg kicks and body kicks. He keeps that lead knee light, keeps it up high, which is going to 
evade a lot of leg kicks, just like he did against Justin Gaethje, which I even talked about before that fight. Oliver is going to negate leg kicks against Gaethje, and he should also be able to do the same against Islam Makhachev. Lifting the knee is also going to deflect and block the front kick. So not only is he faking Islam to move backwards by lifting the knee upward, but he's also defending all of Islam's long-range strikes at the same time. The only thing that Oliveira is going to have to be worried about is that he might invite in a takedown when he does that. Because if he's lifting the knee upward, he can't move anywhere. And maybe Islam can grab onto that leg. But again, like we talked about before, Islam's running at a big risk of getting his neck snatched up when he does that. So in a way, if Oliver wants to be a bit tricky out there and deceitful, he can keep doing that, lifting the knee upward and hoping the time that Islam shoots on it so he knows that's the moment he can grab his neck. And remember how we talked about how Islam likes to avoid strikes? So this will even come with the feints from Oliveira. He likes to just backstep and move away from everything, just in a straight line at times. And he will also move off in a slight left angle, but it depends on what kind of strike the opponent is throwing. He generally moves in the direction the punch is moving as well. So if a right straight is coming down the center line, Islam is moving away on the center line. If there's a left hook coming, he's moving to his left side away from the left hook. The punches in Islam usually move in the same direction. Why is this dangerous for Islam Makhachev against Charles Oliveira? Well, number one, Oliveira doesn't always throw singular attacks like Thiago Moises did. And a lot of Islam's opponents in the past have done, right? Islam hasn't fought high caliber strikers before, or at least strikers that would put punches together and set things up for him to move into a trap. So the thing about moving away from Oliveira's right straight is the reach might be able to get him at the end of it. So even if Makhachev is moving away, he can still get caught at the end of that punch and Oliveira has perfect form. He brings it right back to his stance. He doesn't overextend with the right straight. So there's not even that much of an opportunity for Makhachev to counter it. If he moved off the center line, now he can counter it. But if he's moving away and then Oliveira just retracts the punch back to his stance, there is really nothing that Islam could do to get back at him. But the other thing here is, Oliver can set those traps very easily against that kind of movement. If he knows everywhere Islam moves is the exact direction my punch is going, I can just use that punch as a setup and then intercept his movement with something else. And this is the perfect example of when Makhachev fought Thiago Moises, where Moises in the orthodox stance, just like Oliveira, threw a left hook. And from this left hook, you see that Islam moves slightly to his left as well as pulls away from the punch. Same direction the left hook is coming. This sets Islam up for two different kind of attacks. Number one is the right straight. Oliveira could take the outside foot very easily as Islam is giving it up to him. And from that, he has a lot of space to move forward after the left hook, which is used to set up and bait Islam to take that kind of movement and then chase him down with the right straight. As we all know, you can't move backwards faster than someone can move forward. So that is a great combination for Charles' setup, which is actually something he's thrown against many fighters before. So it's a common technique he already uses, and Islam might be the easiest fighter he's ever fought to hit someone with that. And then here's the other thing. By presenting a right straight, threatening Islam with it, we know that Islam is going to move back on a straight line. And naturally, instinctively, because everybody trains against right straights, they learn how to defend it, it's built into you to instinctively parry the opponent's right straight with your left hand, to knock it the other way. And what that also is doing is, it's moving your hand away from your own head. So what's the kind of strike that Oliveira can land here? The high kick. But he has to do it smoothly, make it look like one singular motion, one singular attack. Throws the right straight halfway out there, and at the same time is coming up with the right high kick, which would be a devastating attack against Islam Makhachev. So that is generally how the fight can go in the center of the octagon. Now what happens... If Islam gets Charles Oliveira backing up, what if he gets him on the fence? Even in the stand-up that Oliveira's on the back foot, Islam's going to want to tie up with him, put him up against the fence, and do his work there. But looking back at the Thiago Moises fight, which is the most important fight to look at for Islam Makhachev in preparation for this one against Charles Oliveira, knowing that Moises is an orthodox fighter with high-level Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, it was very interesting to see how many times Islam got reversed on the cage. Thiago Moises is not generally like a great wrestler. He's not generally a big, strong guy like that. He's much smaller than Islam, actually. And it was shocking to see how many times Moises was able to reverse the position on Islam against the fence. And it was never really that difficult. It was actually pretty easy for him to do it. Charles can do the same thing, knowing that he's much better in the clinch than Thiago is. Knowing that he has better control there. Knowing he has a tight plum. Knowing that he's been working on his wrestling for years at a high level. What happens with the strikes against the fence as well? That Oliveira can start to soften up Islam and turn him against the fence and then work his magic from there. After studying Islam's fence work for so long, it's clear that his cage work is not as good as Habib's. And I think a lot of people may have misconstrued how good Islam is against the fence, knowing that he's friends with Habib and they use very similar techniques. Habib is a menace against the fence. And Islam, even though he's very good there, 
may have some holes that Oliveira can exploit against the fence. Not only that, we've seen Islam get taken to the ground by Tago Moises. Again, not that great of a wrestler. And when he got taken to the ground, what did he instinctively do? He gave up his back. This is something Habib didn't do before. Once he got taken down, he went for the guillotine. It failed, which is most likely going to happen against Oliveira as well. If Oliveira picks him up and slams him, just like he did against Tony Ferguson over and over again. So we know that Oliveira can definitely take opponents down against the fence. The more I've actually researched and analyzed it, the more I wouldn't be surprised if Oliveira does take Islam to the ground. It's not going to be through some technical takedown. For sure, he's not going to beat Islam in that area, but just using his pure strength, picking up and slamming him, just like Taka Moises did, Islam will be quick to give up his back. And as soon as that happens, the fight could be over. Now, we've seen Oliveira slip off people's backs before, so it's not an absolute win for Oliveira if Islam does that, but it's so dangerous. If Oliveira does take Islam down, the fight could be over, which is an outcome that most people aren't even considering. And that is ultimately the end of the breakdown, guys. A lot to look forward to, a lot of scenarios that can happen in this fight. I will say for sure, though, Oliveira's chances have arisen in my opinion, even though I always thought the fight was pretty close. So take that for what you will, and I'll see you guys in the next video.